Now that we are learning about Belle Gunness's crimes and her victims, let's learn who Belle Gunness actually was. Welcome to episode 5, Who Was Belle Gunness? Belle was not her real name. She was born Brynhild Paul's daughter Storset in Selbu, Norway on November 11th, 1859. Her father was Paul Pedersen Storset and mother Barrett Ol's daughter Storset. They were a very poor family. Her father was a sharecropper farmer in the summer months and a stonemason in the winter months. Brynhild had many laborers chores as a peasant child. In June 1874, when she was 14, she was confirmed at the Evangelical Lutheran Church. Her religious teacher, Pastor Agaton Hanstein, evaluated her, quote, good in religious knowledge and diligence. That same year, she was hired out as a dairy maid. After a full day of working in the fields, Brynhild would sit by the firelight knitting mittens, caps, and other woolen goods and added the traditional star rose pattern for which Selbu was renowned. Not all of Brynhild's neighbors shared high opinions of her. In one of the local newspapers' editorial, she is remembered by many as a very bad human being, capricious and extremely malicious. She had unpretty habits and always in the mood for dirty tricks, talked little, and was always a liar, even as a child. As a grown-up, she was still little respected and was scum of society. Stories have also circulated that when Brynhild was 17, she was seeing a boy who was the son of a wealthy landowner. She became pregnant by him, and when she told him, he severely beat her in the stomach until she miscarried. Shortly after this, the young man died of an intestinal ailment whose symptoms were suspiciously like those of arsenic poisoning. Was this her first victim? Was it this that caused her murderous lifestyle? At almost 23 years old in September of 1881, the time of Brynhild's arrival to the United States, about 26,000 immigrants from Norway lived here. About 80% lived in Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and the Dakotas. Chicago is where Brynhild settled because her sister, Nellie Larson, lived there. She invited Brynhild to come from Norway to her home and she paid the expenses of getting her there. Brynhild later changed her name to be more American. She changed it to Bella Peterson and would later become known far and wide as Belle. Living with her sister and brother-in-law, she had a place to stay, but her days would be consumed with sewing and laundry work. In later years, her family would look back and recall that as a newly arrived young woman, there was something wild about her, something very evident in her mental makeup. She was not one to fit in to the mold of other young Norwegian immigrants. Somewhere in the mix, she met Mad Sorensen, a night watchman. They were married in 1893 and later opened a confectionery store at Grand Avenue and Elizabeth Street. It burned down in 1898 and the insurance money was collected. The Sorensons used the insurance money to move farther west to Alma Street in Austin, Illinois, where they boarded foster children and, of course, received money for their care. According to Nellie Larson, Belle's sister, Belle never had any of her own children and it was very painful for Belle to come to terms with. She even asked to adopt Nellie's oldest daughter, Olga, who was four years old at the time. Nellie, of course, refused and it caused an estrangement of the sisters. Over the next two years, between 1896 and 1898, they became the parents of four more children. Caroline, Myrtle, Axel, sometimes in research it's known as Alex, and Lucy. One fact is certain. Soon after their births, two of them died. Caroline at five months old, and Axel at three months. At a time when the U.S. infant mortality rate was shockingly high, approximately 100 deaths per 1,000 live births, no suspicions were aroused by the sudden passing of the little ones whose causes of death were given respectively as colitis, 
On the evening of Tuesday, April 10th, 1900, a fire reportedly caused by a defective heating apparatus broke out in the Sorensen's Alma Street home. Though firefighters arrived in time to save the building, Bella and Mads suffered the loss of roughly $650 worth of household goods. Fortunately, as the Chicago Tribune reported, all the property destroyed was insured, and the couple received another hefty settlement. For Bella, there was still more to come. In 1900, Mad Sorensen died suddenly at the age of 46. The death certificate states cerebral hemorrhage. Dr. J.C. Miller, a young physician who had once boarded with the Sorensons, received an urgent summons from Bella. Hurrying to the Alma Street address, he found Mads fully clothed, lying dead atop his bed. By then, another doctor, Charles E. Jones, the Sorensons' family physician, had arrived. Questioning Bella, they learned that her husband, who was suffering from a bad cold, had come home from work that morning complaining of a fearful headache. She had given him a dose of quinine powder, then gone down to the kitchen to prepare dinner for the children. When she went back upstairs a short while later to check on her husband, she found him dead. He later explained that he thought the druggist had made a mistake and given her morphine instead of quinine. Miller asked to see the paper in which the powder had been wrapped. Bella replied that she had thrown it away. With no other evidence to go on beyond the symptoms as Bella described, the two doctors concluded that Mads had died of cerebral hemorrhage. Mads' brother Oscar was suspicious and came all the way from Providence, Rhode Island to have his brother's body exhumed. The exhumation revealed nothing suspicious, but it would cost a large amount of money to look at the brain and stomach, money which Oscar did not have. Bell received a substantial amount of money on Mad's life insurance policies. They had gotten a new policy just before this, and it was curious as two life insurance policies overlapped each other on one day, and that was the day he died. She received $2,000 from the first policy and $3,000 from the second, totaling $5,000. In today's money, it would be almost $180,000, although some research has said she received a total of $8,500 on both policies combined. On the morning of Thursday, August 2nd, 1900, Mad Sorensen was laid to rest beside his two infant children at the Forest Home Cemetery. Caroline, age five months, and Alex, age three months. These were their foster children who also mysteriously died in Belle's care. Among those attending the funeral was Bella's estranged sister, Nellie. Exactly what transpired between them is unknown, though according to Nellie's testimony, she was gripped at one point with a dark premonition. She said, while I was there, a terrible feeling came over me. I felt just like something was going to happen. The sensation hit her with such a force that she grew dizzy and could not stand up. Another eight years would pass before she understood the meaning of the dread that seized her that day. Since Belle was under suspicion by neighbors and family, she left to visit a cousin on a farm near Fergus Falls, Minnesota and she wrote an advertisement in the Chicago Tribune offering her city property in trade for a farm. The advertisement was seen by Arthur Williams, whose in-laws had tired of the three years spent living in a farmhouse on McClung Road outside of LaPorte, Indiana. A trade was agreed to using $6,000 as the value point and Williams consented to Bell's request for a new barn on the property. History was about to be made in the northwest corner of Indiana. Bell bought the farm of 48 acres in November of 1901, and she remarried following April 1902. Her new husband was Peter Gunness, who had courted her for two months. The household consisted of Bell and Peter, Jenny Olson, Bell's foster daughter, Lucy and Myrtle Sorensen, Bell's adopted daughters, and Peter brought two girls of his own, Swanhild Gunness, who was about five years old, and an infant daughter. Peter's first wife, Jenny Gunness, had died during childbirth. Just five days after Belle and Peter were married, Peter's seven-month-old daughter passed away in Belle's care. Eight months later, Peter Gunness himself was dead, 
cause of death, a meat grinder fell off a shelf and smashed his head. Do you think Belle has killed another husband? Find out more about Peter Gunnis in episode 6 coming soon. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more.